I don't recall being so nice mostly throughout the year, but that's okay. Santa thought I did something right. Hey guys, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season and that you had fun celebrating the new year. Me, on the other hand, spent New Year's Day running a high fever. Hence why this Christmas haul video has been, um, well, it's already the second week of January. So yeah, it's a bit late, but better late than never, right? I'm recuperating slowly but surely. I'm going to do my best here without hacking my lungs up. So let's get on with my Christmas haul. Hit that like button if Santa was good to you this holiday season. And feel free to share down below what you got. Now, I did good this past Christmas season. I don't recall being so nice mostly throughout the year, but that's okay. Santa thought I did something right. It really was puzzle stuff galore. And some kitchen things, which is my other passion as well. But in terms of puzzles, not only did I get puzzle sets, but I got some kind of, I guess you can call them accessories. So... Let's start with those first. So the first thing I have here is called the Puzzle Scoop. And let me know if any of you have this, but it comes with a built-in LED light and it's a three times magnifying power on this thing. And it's a scoop, so it easily moves jigsaw puzzle sections with, with a large flexible surface. And of course the magnifier, you use it to kind of enlarge and illuminate your work so that you can see the image on the puzzle pieces better. So I feel like this is gonna be pretty darn useful, especially for the Seiko puzzles. Oh, funny enough, this is actually Branded, this is a Seiko piece. So, you know, maybe they know that their images on their puzzle pieces aren't that clear. So I like this. I'm I'm curious to see how well this works. But yeah, let me know if you have this and if you use this quite often. Next up, I got this as a stocking stuffer. We have puzzle glue. And this one is called Puzzle Guard. It's to save, seal, and display your puzzles forever. This is branded by Cardinal. Now I just glanced over the directions and it seems pretty straightforward. I guess the hardest thing for me is going to be deciding which puzzle to use this on. I definitely plan to make a video of me using this for the first time. So we'll see how well that works out. Or in my case, you know, I don't have the best luck, so it might turn out terrible. So I'm sure that would be interesting to see. Let me know if any of you guys like using this stuff. I'm sure there are other brands that make puzzle glue. So let me know if you use this one or if there's other ones that you use that you really recommend. Next up, we have a puzzle mat. And the mat size on this is 46 by 26 inches. And this is for puzzles up to 1,500 pieces. So we've got ourselves a big area here. So with this mat, you're supposed to spread it out, inflate it, roll it up, and then fasten it. This really sounds like something I can screw up. So I'll definitely be filming myself using this and the puzzle glue for the very first time. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Hopefully it turns out to be, you know, a pretty useful video and something that you can use to help you try to store your puzzles, or it might just end up being a comedy, I don't know. But we'll see, right? So that's what I got in terms of puzzle accessories. Now, let's move on to the sets. Now, I'm really excited about this one because this is from a brand that I don't currently own. Now I do. And it's absolutely gorgeous. We have a Disney puzzle from Dowdle. Dowdle, is that right? Please let me know if I said that right or wrong. It's called Beauty and the Beast Finding Love. And this is 500 pieces and it is 16 by 20 inches when it's completed. Now this is interesting. On the side of the puzzle, it says that this set includes a full size reference image. So we get a poster here and also a resealable bag for puzzle pieces. I've never owned a puzzle that came with a resealable bag. Why don't they all have this? And also, it comes with a no missing piece guarantee. This is very exciting. I love the image. I mean, Beauty and the Beast happens to be one of my most favorite Disney princess movies. So I'm all about this puzzle. 
The artwork is absolutely beautiful and you pretty much have everything in this image. You know, you have your typical scene here of Belle and Beast kind of like building that friendship and that bond. And you know, you have the other friends hanging around, but then in the background here, you have LeFou as a snowman kind of spying on them very creepily. And then on top of him, you have Gaston in the back showing off his muscles. This is a great image, don't get me wrong. It's a little random. But you know, it's this is fun to look at and I'm excited. And you know me, I love trying different brands. Our next puzzle that we have is from Disney's Thomas Kincaid Studios. And this is a Seiko puzzle and it is called Pocahontas. It is 750 pieces and it is 24 inches by 18 inches when it's completed. And this is great. I don't have a Pocahontas puzzle, so I'm really excited to have this one now. So this is gonna be a great addition to my Disney Thomas Kincaid collection. Next up, we have another puzzle by Seiko, and this is also from Thomas Kincaid Studios, but this is not a Disney one. It is called Amsterdam Cafe. It is 1,000 pieces. It is 26.6 .6 by 19 inches when it's completed. And like the Disney one, this one also has the puzzle poster. I'm pretty sure that's a basic Seiko thing. And I absolutely love this image because, I mean, come on, wouldn't you want to be sat at this cafe? We got a beautiful sunset going on. This looks so cozy. It's so peaceful. I decided to take a late ride on my bicycle and I just ended up at this cafe. So I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to sit here and have a cup of coffee. Looking at the view and trying to figure out who left their shoes behind. I love this image. I can't wait to do this one. Our next puzzle up, this is very exciting because this is from a brand that I don't currently own. Again, we have a Harry Potter puzzle. Don't tell me you don't love Harry Potter now. Hit the like button if you love Harry Potter. And if not, give me a good reason why not. But anyways, we have a Harry Potter puzzle here. And this is of the Hogwarts school crest. This is 1,000 pieces and is 20 inches by 28 inches when it's completed. And this is by the brand Aquarius. Now this is interesting. I'm just reading this right now. This apparently has easy framing format. And what that basically means, according to this, is that standard size for 1,000 piece puzzles have always been 20 by 27, but a standard frame is actually 20 by 28. So these easy frame puzzles are designed to fit into a 20 by 28 frames, which allows you to display your puzzles without thinking you bought the wrong size frame. Now that's really exciting. It's funny because I've been trying to find frames to put my, like actual frames to put my puzzles in, but I can never find a size that would work with what I have. So this is very interesting information. Because of that, this might actually be my first puzzle that I put in an actual picture frame because it's gonna fit, it's gonna work. So this is great. I can't wait to do this one. And it's my first Harry Potter puzzle, so that's nice. Our next puzzle is by Seiko, and this is another Disney Thomas Kincaid piece. And this is a big one. It's called Beauty and the Beast Dancing in the Moonlight. And this is 1,500 pieces, and it is 32 by 24 inches when it's completed. This is a fantastic image. Most of my Beauty and the Beast puzzles are like during the daytime, and this one is, this is nighttime. This is absolutely beautiful. Like all of Thomas Kincaid's images, there's a lot going on in them. You know, you have Belle and Beast dancing in the night. I love the lighting coming out of onto the balcony. And then of course you have Gaston and his gang, you know, trying to crash the party. By the way, I think this castle looks amazing in the darkness. The use of dark colors in this image is absolutely amazing. This is gonna take me ages to finish. I just know it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Next up, we have another puzzle from Seiko. And this is another Thomas Kincaid studio piece but not from Disney again. This one is called Clock Tower Cottage. It is 1,500 pieces and it is 32 by 24 inches when it's completed. This is such a serene image. You have the beautiful stream coming down from the hill. You have this beautiful cottage in the background with this beautiful clock tower. If I were to build like a vacation home and it, you know, like a little cottage or something, it would definitely be this style. I love the stonework. I love the roof. It's just absolutely beautiful. The location is perfect. We got some animals grazing in the background. What a peaceful image. I could just be sat on that swing, just being one with nature. And then when I've had enough fresh air, I'll just go inside the cottage and, you know, have a cup of coffee and relax, you know? Wouldn't you just love to hang out in a cottage like that? It's too, this is too exciting. And lastly, I'm really excited about this. 
we have a Ravensburger puzzle. And this one is called Paris Impressions. It is 1,000 pieces and it is 27 by 20 inches when it's completed. Now the back of the puzzle has a lot of information about Ravensburger in general. And one thing they mentioned that I'm really excited to try when I finally open one of these up is their soft click technology. And it guarantees a 100% interlocking mechanism to give it like the, the best fit pretty much. And it's supposed to result in like a extremely smooth puzzle when it's all done. Now I have other Ravensburger puzzles that are completely brand new sealed and whatnot, but I think this one is gonna be the first Ravensburger I try. Because I mean, come on, take a look at this image. There's nothing I love more than hanging out in restaurants and cafes. So I'm totally in this image. I'm currently looking out my second floor window from my Airbnb and I'm currently looking at the cafe to see how busy it is. Considering it's not busy at all, I think I'm just gonna go head down there and have a cup of coffee and maybe a soup and a sandwich or something. Probably throw in a croissant in there as well since I'm in Paris, you know? And we got a patisserie in the background, which is super exciting. So you know that'll be my next stop. Like this image makes me wanna go to Paris. You even got the Eiffel Tower way back in the background there. This is such a fantastic image. Yeah, that's it. This is gonna be my first Ravensburger puzzle that I try, hands down. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven puzzle sets for Christmas and three accessories. So yeah, I, I, I would say I did pretty well this past Christmas. I'm excited that I got puzzles from brands that I don't own, which is great because, I mean, I've always been a Seiko person because, I mean, that was pretty much all that I would buy from places like Walmart because they had all the Disney puzzle selections. But now, since I've been exploring different brands, I it's kind of opened my eyes to what else there is out there. And it's amazing how many brands are so much better than Seiko. And I know there's tons and tons and tons more out there and I'm excited to get my hands on as many as I can. But let me know in the comments down below if you have any of these puzzles or let me know your experience with any of the puzzle brands that I mentioned here. Now I wanted to quickly share with you a couple of plans, updates, or ideas that I have. First of all, I'm planning to put out kind of a series based on facts and my opinions of certain puzzle brands and basically call it puzzle brand reviews. First one that'll be coming up is Seiko because I kind of feel like I've done enough Seiko puzzles in my life to kind of form a pretty solid opinion on it. And I plan to do it with all the brands that I come across, but not until I get a good, I would say at least two, three puzzle sets in before I form my opinion. I think that's fair. So those will be coming up soon. And I've been kind of back and forth with an idea in my head on just having videos that are solely based on just me completing a puzzle from start to finish, basically a time lapse of that with music in the background. And that's basically for people who are just not interested in me yapping throughout the whole video. So yeah, basically providing something for those viewers who are interested in really only that kind of thing. But I'm still gonna be keeping my typical puzzle review videos as well. This will kind of just be like a supplement. So basically I'm just trying to have something for everybody. But if you have any ideas on any puzzle type videos that you would like for me to work on, please let me know down below and I'll definitely look into it. If you'd like to see me complete these puzzles, and to see what else I'm up to with puzzles, be sure to subscribe so that you can follow me along my jigsaw journey. Now in my next puzzle review video, I'm gonna be working on a puzzle from Masterpieces and that's gonna be my first time on that, so stay tuned for that. I'll leave a video right here so that you can kind of get an idea what I get into with my reviews and see what tips I have for completing puzzles. Well guys, I'm gonna go make some tea because my throat feels like fire. Wishing you all the best in this new year and I'll see you next time.